With the launch of Season 1 of Modern Warfare coming out yesterday, there's been a lot of attention on the Battle Pass, the microtransactions, new maps, and weapons that have been added into the game. But one thing that's been a little bit overlooked is the new story that has been added in Modern Warfare. This story centers around two new characters, Mara and Nikita, who are the two new operators added in Season 1, but it also progresses the overall story of Modern Warfare, with it focusing on Al-Assad, the new bad guy at the end of the campaign of Modern Warfare. So today we're going to dive into that backstory of season one and explain to you what exactly the big cutscene means for the game. And let me tell you, there is a big, big Easter egg in this cutscene that I have not seen anyone talk about. And I put two and two together and it's going to be at the end of the video. So honestly, if you're not enjoying the video, you might want to skip towards the end just to see that Easter egg. But for the rest of this video, let's dive in to the full story of season one. Kamarov, AQ Hilo in my sights. Take it down. Roger, stand by. Target destroyed. General Lyons, this is Mara. AQ Hilo down north of my position. Copy, get in there. Confirm enemy KIA. Rog, on the move. Eyes on. Payload appears to be gas canisters. It's contact! General, I got a legion firing on my position! Secure that payload now! Sergeant Kamarov, we have coalition fighters in the AO. Don't let them get the upper hand, Nicto. Get down there! Let's move! No problem, brother. We have more. Plenty more. Now this cutscene revolves around two main characters. The first one that we see who shoots down the helicopter is Nikto. Now, Nikto is an interesting character. First of all, he always wears a mask and there's a good reason for it. So let's dive into his backstory. So first of all, he is underneath the Spetsnaz division, but as we find out from his background, he is a former FSB deep cover agent. He was captured and tortured at the hands of Mr. Z, who we pretty much know for sure is Imran Zakaev. Now because of the torture, his face was disfigured and he was diagnosed with acute dissociative disorder which is super super common when people have experienced extreme trauma now he remains a methodical calculating soldier and he is reassigned to the spetsnaz division to utilize his skill set and as we find out based off of the cutscene he is working under Komarov, who is the leader of the allegiance division now moving on to mara the other character in the cutscene. Her backstory is a little bit different. First of all, she's part of the coalition under the Warcom division. Her citizenship is Venezuelan, and this is what her background says. She's a Venezuelan national turned CIA asset at 15, which I don't even know how that's possible, but she was very young. Now, she provided intel for the U.S. to launch an in-country covert ops against Alcatala sleeper cells. She then volunteered for the U.S. SOF training, which is just special forces training, and she conducted a clandestine ops for CIA until she was invited to the Warcom division in 2017, which is two years before the events of Modern Warfare. Based off of everything we know from that, we can kind of assume the fact that she had some sort of inside information about Alcatala forces when she was back in Venezuela, hence why she was a CIA asset. Now, in the cutscene that we're watching here, we find out that she's working underneath General Lyons, who was this lady that you're seeing here from the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign. So now that we know about the characters, we can actually look at the cutscene and discuss what's actually going on here, because it actually kind of contradicts the story of Spec Ops, but we'll get to that in a minute. What's going on here is at the beginning of the cutscene, Nikito is told by Komarov to shoot down an Alcatala helicopter that is flying through the sky. Now, as he does this, the helicopter crashes to the ground, and this gives us the backstory of Crash, which is actually pretty interesting to see the origin story of a map like this. Back in Call of Duty 4, we just know that a helicopter helicopter crashed and it was during a battle, hence why the multiplayer map was there. In this game, we know that Nikito actually shot down that helicopter and hence why there is a battle going on between the Allegiance and the Coalition at this site. Now, an interesting thing about this is in Call of Duty 4, this map was said 
said to be taking place in Iraq. Now, throughout the entire campaign of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we don't step foot in Iraq once. It's either in Yurzikstan or in Verdansk, Russia, as we see in Spec Ops. So we don't really know exactly where this map takes place, but just saying in Call of Duty 4, it was in Iraq. But that's kind of beside the point. Now, after the fact, we see Mara discovers that the plane has been downed, and inside the plane is none other than chlorine gas, the big thing that we saw a lot in the campaign of Modern Warfare. Now, after this, the two characters start fighting over the gas to be the ones who take it down. Now, the problem with this story is that these two are actually supposed to be working together. At the end of the campaign, we see that the Allegiance and the Coalition are supposed to be working together to take down Al Catala in Verdansk. Russian intel. Where did we get this? My counterpart in Moscow. The CIA working with the FSB. Not the first time. Kamarov. Captain Price. I'm in joint command with Sergeant Kamarov of the Allegiance. Let's put our differences aside. Together, as armistice, this is our first direct action against the Al Qatar army. Apparently, in this case, they are not working together. So that's essentially the backstory of what's going on in this cutscene between Nikito and Mara. However, where this cutscene gets really interesting is as we zoom out from the battlefield and over top of Crash, we see Khalid al-Assad watching a screen of his helicopter being shot down and him losing a shipment of his chlorine gas. But at the very end of the cutscene, he says this. No problem, brother. We have more. Plenty more. which hints towards the fact that he's got a lot more chlorine gas saved up and he's planning on using it. I'm guessing that this is going to continue in further Spec Ops missions, and of course, in the other seasons as they come out, we'll probably learn more about Al-Assad's gas. And I'm not talking about the kind of gas that comes after a late night trip to Taco Bell. Now, it actually gets a lot crazier than this, because as it zooms out here, if you take a look at Al-Assad's surroundings, it may look a little bit familiar. If you really look around, you'll realize that he is standing at a television network. Now, if you played Call of Duty 4, you may recognize this because there was a map in Call of Duty 4 called Broadcast that took place at a television network. And on the side of the wall where you see Al-Assad standing, you can see that the network is BCH4. Now, I went on Broadcast, looked around, and I couldn't find BCH4 anywhere. But what I could do is I could find the exact position that Al-Assad is standing in. And what I did is took the map from Call of Duty 4 and added it to the background of Al-Assad. And what you're gonna notice is that there are a ton of similarities. On the very left-hand side of the screen, you can see the doorway in both images. Above that, you can see a wall with a window underneath it. The big difference there is, of course, the BCH4 sign that's on the wall in this game, but not in Call of Duty 4. On top of that, if you look at the ceiling, both of them have the studio lights going around the entire ceiling. On the right-hand side, both of them have a doorway with right above it, both of them have like kind of like this curved railing that goes around the edge of the ceiling. There is so many similarities, and what this hints towards is that Broadcast is going to be coming back as a new map within Modern Warfare. But it gets even crazier when you look at the story implications of this. In the mission where you actually go to the Broadcast station in Call of Duty 4, it is the mission called Charlie Don't Surf. This mission is right before the scene where Al-Assad blows up over 30,000 American soldiers with a nuclear bomb. I am wondering if they are going to bring back that nuclear explosion with maybe Season 2 or Season 3 of Modern Warfare. If they stick with the crossovers, it would be about that timing that they do so. Now, I don't know if they're doing this, but the story implications kind of point towards the fact that they might. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the full story of Season 1. We get the story of Nikito. We get the story of Mara. We got a little bit more background on Al-Assad and what's going on at Broadcast. We got the fact that Broadcast might actually be making a return in Modern Warfare. There's a lot of really interesting things in that short little cutscene they gave us. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button. It also shows me that you enjoy these type of videos and want to see more videos like it. And on top of that, let me know down in the comments if you want to see me cover anything else story-wise in any Call of Duty game whatsoever. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on everything Modern Warfare and everything with my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn notifications on, and as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, peace out. We are, we are